We're now going to discuss basic OpenGL matrix stacks and transforms. So let me first summarize the OpenGL vertex transformations. Recall that you start with the object in object coordinates, and here you have the x, y, z, w coordinates and homogeneous coordinates. Then you define the model view matrix, which includes the object transformations to place the objects properly in the world, as well as the glm look at command, which you've implemented in homework one. Then you go through the projection matrix, which goes from 3D to 2D, which is usually glm perspective. So the shaded boxes are what you've already implemented in homeworks one and also in homework two. That gives you the eye coordinates used for lighting. And then you go to the perspective divide or dehomogenization. This also, uh, you have clip coordinates and you can clip to the minus one to one range. Then you can do the perspective divide or dehomogenization. You get normalized device coordinates and uh, then you do a viewport transform so that it finally appears in the window. To do all of these transforms, of course, you need some kind of matrix operations. In particular, you need matrix stacks. And this is very important for hierarchically defined figures such as the human body. You might consider the face, the torso. So you might define the torso initially. You might translate and scale to place the face, the hands, the legs, so forth. In old OpenGL, matrix stacks were defined for you with things like GL push matrix, GL pop matrix, GL load, GL multiply the matrix. In fact, in the demo program that I've given out, which is my test two, you use the old style stack. However, things have changed in a number of different ways. Nowadays in C++, the standard template library includes a stack type. In fact, if you use the GLM mat4 uh, for matrices, you can just plug mat4 into a stack. And therefore, the current recommendation is to just use STL stacks, which are managed yourself. And therefore, all of this model view matrix push pop is really deprecated. In homework two, to understand the way the stack works, you should really manage it yourself. In the directions for homework two, we explain a little bit about the STL library for stacks. Uh, you can, of course, uh, also look up, look this up online. It's very well documented. For homeworks one and two, you write your own transformation code for translate, scale, and rotate. Of course, in old style OpenGL, commands are provided for these purposes like GL scale, GL rotate, GL translate, and there are equivalent GLM commands, but uh, you are supposed to write it yourself in homework one and two. Be careful of OpenGL conventions. In the old style, you write multiply the current matrix, and this leads to a difference in code where the last transformation in the code is actually the first one that's applied. And GLM operators largely follow this convention, but this is a bit different from the standard mathematical convention and leads to column versus row order, and so you have to be careful. GL you look at, and its instantiation is GLM look at, is just like a matrix in any other type of matrix. And like any other transform, it affects the model view matrix. Therefore, you specify it after you've specified the transforms to the objects. So in code, it comes first. In the actual operation, it comes last. So why is all of this the exact location of GLU look at not an issue for GLU perspective? because GLU perspective affects the projection matrix stack, which usually doesn't have anything else in it, while GLU look at affects the model view matrix that has camera positioning, but also has object motion. So let's talk about drawing the pillars. This is old style OpenGL. In new OpenGL, you would manage the stack yourself and use STL commands to pop and push. Look at the way in which this is written. This is a very powerful idiom in OpenGL. We first specify the matrix mode to be the model view matrix. Then we come to the first pillar. And notice this command between push and pop matrix. That's because anything you do within these doesn't affect what follows next. So it's very common that you keep whatever is in the stack at this point, which may be GL you look at, which may be other object transformations. You push that on the stack, do your translation to draw your pillar, pop out. And so you have the transforms within this push-pop block. 
So here you translate to a particular location on the screen, you draw this cube, and the zero refers to a color. So in this case, it's red. So similarly, you go to the next color, which, uh, and you go to the next location. We can also talk about uh, the third and fourth pillars, again, different colors for the cube and different locations on the scene. So we are now ready to do a demo, and let me bring in my source code again. Now, let me first say a little bit about this demo. So this will be demo one, which will include the white plane that we saw earlier, and will also include the pillars. One question I'm going to ask you once I start the demo is does the order of drawing matter? So what happens if I move the floor after the pillars and the code versus moving it before? So think about that while I set up this demo. So once again, I'm showing you my actual uh, text editing uh, environment and my compilation environment. And all I'm going to do is to change this to one. If you look at the code, it includes a number of lines, right? So I'll just show this to you. So it includes lines like if demo is greater than or equal to two, do I do so. So if demo is greater than zero, then I actually draw my first, second, third, and fourth pillars, which is just the code that I just showed you on the slide. So let's try to make the program. Again, the make file is fairly standard. And now let me run this. So here I have the program, you can see that I have the plane and I have the pillars and this looks really good, right? So here you see that it appears in the way it's supposed to appear with the plane below and the pillars on top. Let's now change the order of drawing. So let's see again what we did here. We drew the object floor and then we drew the object for the pillars. So one thing we can do is come down so here is, does the order of drawing matters? What happens if I draw off the ground after the pillars? And I'll change this to actually draw the floor here. So I haven't really changed anything. I'm still drawing the pillars. I'm still drawing the floor. Only thing is, I'm now drawing the floor after I draw the pillars. So think about whether that should lead to any change in the program uh, output. And let me make the program again. And let me run it. So now notice notice what's going on. You see that the floor was drawn after the pillars and therefore the pillars come first and then the floor comes after them. Intuitively it makes sense, it's just be drawing objects in the order in which I specified them. However, that might not be the desired behavior that you want.